everyone. We talked in chapter four about dew point and about condensation. Now in chapter five, we get into the meat of cloud development and precipitation, which is the bulk of what meteorology is about. So we're getting into the heavy duty stuff and you have a good background, a good support system to get you through this. Let's get started. When we talked about dew point, we talked about condensation and we said that when the temperature of the air or the temperature of the object meets the dew point or goes under the dew point, then you'll have condensation. But it's a lie. Um, the phase change into the condensed liquid may not always happen. And it's not just dew point that figures into condensation. There's also um, another element and you know this because when you did your lab with the hand warmer you super cooled that water that should have been frozen at that temperature but wasn't freezing so the temperature of the hand warmer met the temperature of the dew point but it still wasn't frozen and the only way you got it to freeze was by dropping a crystal into the bag for the hand warmer and suddenly it froze like that or it should have and in inserting that crystal what you're doing is you're providing a foundation a plate for all of the crystallization to come to it's like making rock rock salt candy where you dip the rock salt on the string into the solution and suddenly all the crystals appear. You need that first crystal. So not only do you need to meet the dew point temperature, but you need to have that crystal as well. Um, so just like you notice here, it's really important to notice this, that this has freezing line at zero degrees Celsius, but guess what? You still have liquid under and below the freezing temperature because in this area, there's no condensation nuclei to start off the freezing reaction. So you need two things for that cloud to form. You need a good dew point and you need some good crystals. Those crystals are called condensation nuclei, in plural, condensation nuclei, the flat microscopic surface. That's what you're seeing here. It's two ten thousandths, two ten thousandths of a millimeter. You can't see it. Um, these are dust particles that you can't see in the air. And they provide a platform for the even smaller water droplets to grow and grow and grow on to become a typical water drop as they grow. That could take a few days. We're gonna get into how to speed that up later. Um, nitrous oxide particles, like they test for up in Randolph at the DMV, are perfect. Um, condensation nuclei and so they are so good at uh, um, attracting water droplets to them that in fact you don't even have to meet the dew point temperature to start condensing on those nitrous oxide molecules and forming the smog that you know so well in LA so you might think wow it when I am thinking about radiative inversions and fog, I'm thinking about cool mornings. And when I think about LA, I don't think about cool mornings and smog because smog is just smoke fog. When I think of LA, I don't think about cool mornings and you don't. You are actually condensing um, on nitrous oxide above the dew point because the nitrous oxide attracts the water so well. Nitrous oxide is a polar molecule, it attracts another polar molecule like water, and you've got smog in warm temperatures. And here's a graphic to show you. LA, the cold ocean off of it, starts bringing in the cool air that gets trapped under the warm air from the Santa Ana Mountains. You hear about the Santa Ana winds and the fire season in LA, it's off the Santa Ana Mountains and the warm air that's coming in from the Mojave Desert over these mountains just making a beautiful temperature inversion that holds all that smog in place. So supercooling can also happen, um, supercooling without those um, 
uh, condensation nuclei can happen in your hand warmer and it can also happen in distilled water and it can also happen in the upper atmosphere because there's not a lot of dust in the upper atmosphere. So for that reason, you have super cold particles in the upper atmosphere that haven't formed a cloud because there's nothing for them to condense onto. What are we gonna do about that? Um, we are going to think about what happens and the importance of clouds and how those nuclei can get established in those clouds. So just to reiterate, the cloud, the cloud system in the atmosphere is so important because it reflects so much solar energy to keep us moderate in our temperature. And then it emits infrared energy that it has absorbed from the Earth. So it emits the infrared directly to space and gives us a vent. And it's also releasing infrared latent heat energy as well. So this helps to regulate our, our temperature balance. It gives us a clue to atmospheric changes because we can look at the clouds and know what's coming. Um, that's how important it is. And we're gonna study how this condensation happens in the upper atmosphere, maybe without uh, condensation nuclei. We'll get into that later in this chapter. Um, but just um, a critical note for pilots, we've talked about temperature, we've talked about dew point. This is the rest of what comes out of Morristown Airport every day. Ceiling height, visibility, obstruction, division, precipitation, sound familiar? This is all condensation and all cloud development. Um, I also want to go over to enter you into this chapter. I want to go over soundings because we just talked about meteograms from Morristown, um, Morristown Airport and how important they are. And that is a one surface area over time. And soundings are one time over many surface areas. So from the bottom of the atmosphere to the top of the atmosphere um, and, it, and the balloon moves. So you're getting a big area as the balloon moves. So these are very different measurements. I wanna go over the sounding again with you so that you're ready for what's coming when we talk about cloud development. Let's start with the x-axis first. The x-axis is on the bottom. It is the temperature axis like we're used to. And this temperature axis this particular sounding system that we're going to use um, is called the Stuve diagram. It's easier for you to learn. And the Stuve has um, temperature in Celsius, which you're very familiar with, in the green area. It has temperature in Kelvin in black. You can get used to Kelvin. On the y-axis, it has um, millibars. And the millibars are noted horizontally so that you have 1,000. 950, 900, it goes up by 50s up to about 100 right around the stratosphere. And you also have in here um, altitudes. Now, the millibars are set. The altitudes vary by season and so forth and by pressure. So the altitudes are put in and they're very, um, they seem um, odd because it's 107 meters and um, 139 meters. So the isobars are standardized. The altitude can change with the data that you're collecting. What you have here are, um, are isobars going horizontally for barometric pressure. You have isotherms going up and down for thermal, um, thermal lines from your temperature. And your environmental lapse rate is in red generally. It's the air temperature. You also have wind direction and wind speed on the y-axis on the right. We'll talk more about those as well. Another thing to bring out in terms of soundings is the dew point is always less than the environmental lapse rate. If it's not less, it's raining or it's precipitating. So generally the dew point is less and to the left of the environmental lapse rate. And I want to get you into looking at that environmental lapse rate 
very closely because it's going to help us to learn about cloud development. And I want you to think about the lapse rates and the angles of the lapse rates. And so I have three different angles for you here. We're going to go into it very specifically. But I have a, um, an angle here that's a pretty steep angle for the lapse rate. And I have an angle here that's a pretty gradual angle for the lapse rate. It's kind of sitting on its side. And one that's in the middle. And we're going to talk about these um, specifically. When I talk about the steep lapse rate, I'm going to talk a, about a stand-up street lapse rate. So I want to bring in mnemonics for you. When I talk about the gradual angle, I'm going to talk about a groggy lapse rate, like somebody who's just getting up. Um, so let's get into it a little bit more. I am trying to put into mnemonic stories for you, so you'll start to think about cloud development and these soundings. When I talk about the stand-up straight lapse rate, I'm talking about Mo the meteorologist who gets up at dawn and takes a look at the weather in front of him. You know, it's still chilly outside at dawn, and it's so chilly that you would stand up straight when you went outside because it just goes right through you. Now notice that Mo the meteorologist and his stand up straight um, lapse rate at dawn, he's looking out over fog. Keep that in mind. And when he checks out his steep environmental lapse rate, he's reminded that this lapse rate is a change of X temperature over change of Y altitude. It's a change of temperature over change of altitude. And what he sees is there's not much of a change in temperature over altitude here. It's a stingy number. This is actually 2 degrees Celsius over 1,000 meters. It's a little number. And conversely, his friend on the other side of the world is Marty the meteorologist. And Marty the meteorologist is not getting up at dawn because he's on the other side of the world. It's actually in the afternoon for him there. And he's been working hard all day and, and he decides it's hot. He wants to take a siesta. And he get, he's pretty groggy during his siesta, like this gradual lapse rate. He gets up from his siesta because he hears the grumbling of the atmosphere. Keep that in mind. Marty goes and checks his soundings. And he sees that it's a really gradual sounding here. It's the change of temperature, which is quite a bit over the change of altitude. He gets a lot of temperature rise. He gets a lot of temperature change over his short little altitude area. And this lapse rate is greater than his friend Mo. In fact, this lapse rate is 10 degrees Celsius over a little change of temperature to be continued. Let's keep going on it. See you then.